So what makes a good homeschool space? Do you really need an entire room dedicated to homeschooling? And what would it look like if you had your dream homeschool room? Hi, I'm Jess from the blog asyloandsage.com and today I am going to give you a tour of our homeschool space and we are going to talk about some of the things that you need or don't need, should or shouldn't have in your homeschool space. So let me start off by first telling you a little bit about myself just in case you're new here. So I have five boys. They are all the way from ninth grade down to kindergarten this year and we've been homeschooling since the beginning. I actually used to be an elementary and a preschool teacher, so I've had a lot of experience both in the classroom and at home educating my kids. And we have had quite the variety of homeschool spaces. In some houses, we just had a little corner in the kitchen. Sometimes we just used our kitchen table. One house, we had like a playroom slash homeschool room. In this current house that we're in, when we moved in, we had a space that I thought was going to be our dream homeschool room. And for a short time, it kind of was. But then I began to realize that we don't really use a homeschool room like some people might. Like, I understand the idea behind it, and I know why some people enjoy it. But for us, homeschooling is just so much a part of our life. We don't really have homeschool and life. Like, it's all integrated together. So to have a separate homeschooling space was difficult because it just it just felt unnatural. It just felt very different from the rest of our life and like it was setting homeschooling apart from our life, which just isn't how we do things. So after about a year being in this house, so like two years ago, we shifted some things around and we now have a homeschool space that is integrated into like a family room. We still call it the school room, even though it's used probably way more for just like <laughs> wrestling on the floor and hanging out as a family and the kids playing games and doing all kinds of things. It's probably used much more for that than it is for actual schoolwork because it's just a place where we do our life together, which is really what I want. I don't want our kids to see learning as like a separate thing that they only do when they go into a special room in our house, but it's just something that naturally happens everywhere and all the time. Now, if you wanna hear my whole story of how I got started homeschooling, or if you are new to homeschooling, or if your homeschool just kind of needs a little fresh inspiration and kind of a little like boost before the school year begins, I have a free workshop called The Secret to Your Perfect Homeschool, and I will link it below, or you can go to silentsage.com slash homeschool to find it, and it will help you to get your homeschool started on the right foot or to kind of refresh and recharge your homeschool, and you can hear my whole story. So now I'm gonna give you a little tour of our homeschool family room space. So we actually live in like kind of a quirky tri-level house. So our house doesn't really have much of a basement. It has like this teeny tiny little basement. And so this space kind of serves the same purpose, I think, as like a finished basement might serve. And it's an addition to the original house. So it is a really, really large room. And when we first moved in, it was a living room like we used it as a living room the previous owners had used it as a living room and it felt a little bit awkward because it was so large and my kids always wanted to like destroy the living room to make forts and it bothered me so much i know it shouldn't have bothered me but it really did <laughs> so we decided to turn this into like a kid space that was really um you know they could use it and they could roll around and throw balls and build forts and not feel restricted all right, so I wanna give you a little overview of what this room looks like. You walk through our living room and into this really large and beautiful space that we are so blessed with. Now, we live in Wisconsin, so this space was a lifesaver for us in the winter time with having five boys because there is all of this open floor space that they can pull out these, um, you know, gymnastics mats. These are just simple ones from Ikea. And we got, um, my oldest loves basketball. So we got him a basketball, um, you know, one of these basketball hoop things when we moved in for his birthday or Christmas or something. And we've kind of, 
I've kind of like divided the room into some little spaces that the kids can use in different ways. In the corner over here, we have um, kind of a more traditional homeschool space where we have like a table for art and projects and we have um, a lot of our homeschool materials. And then in the center, we kind of have like a seating space, you know, where you can sit by the fire in the winter. And I mean, this space in the winter is so, so heavily used because, you know, we're in Wisconsin and it's cold and <laughs> we, uh, you know, want the kids to like, they just run laps and laps and laps around here. Kind of have our little library corner, computer. This table and chairs were my grandmother's and so the kids will play games here and stuff. Um, I have some preschool, kindergarten things on that shelf. And then there's a shelf in the corner that has more homeschool materials. And then we have a piano. So you can kind of see how the room is laid out. That's our chicken coop outside <laughs> and our wood pile. And then I'll give you a little bit more, like I'll give you some close ups. Now this room was like tidied a little bit for my nephew came over and he is, you know, he's only seven months old. So he, um, we wanted to pick everything up to make sure that he wasn't gonna choke on anything because my house is not really super baby proof anymore. But I will say that there's like piles of things and it's not, it's definitely not always this tidy and it definitely is not the tidiest it could be, but this is just kind of real life. But we do try to keep this space picked up just because it's a space that we're all in all the time and we don't really have a lot of toys in here, so it stays fairly tidy most of the time. Okay, I'm gonna start with this corner over here. Now, we have a closet in our playroom where we keep a lot of our homeschool materials that, um, you know, we're not using all the time, science experiment materials, um, you know, circuit, those little circuit things, what are they called, snap circuits. Um, just anything that we're not using all the time, we have a different um, space for that, that we can pull things out when we need them. And I like keep in, um, you know, bins kind of like these or whatever. Oh, see, here's just like a pile of stuff that's sitting in a, in a corner. Um, but this corner, this like shelf is nice. I have some like teacher type materials up there. I don't know if you saw my Costco haul. I got those and we're going to use those this year. Um, different like card games, just different, um, different cards. These are magnets, card games, things like that. Another like states game. These are just little, little games, dice, little, um, letter and word tiles. What's in here? Oh, these are tapes and CDs, more cards, and there's a bunch of rocks in there. <laughs> So that shelf is kind of a catch-all for things that we might be using um, but aren't necessarily using every day. I will leave links for anything that I can in the description below. I have a lot of links for things in my Amazon storefront broken down into different categories. I will just leave a link for the whole storefront and then any specifics that I notice, I will leave links for. But I have purchased many, many things used like thrift stores, um, rummage sales, you know, I will watch for teachers who are retiring for rummage sales and I will visit their rummage sales. So don't feel like just because you want to homeschool, you need to have all these materials because you absolutely don't. A lot of these things are extras that we've picked up over time and maybe we've used them for a season and we might sell them if we decide we're not using them anymore. But a lot of these things are just extras. They're fun and they're, you know, cool to have, but they're not necessary. So you can homeschool with just a library card and the internet, and you can borrow things from your local library, borrow things from friends. You can homeschool on a really tight budget. I will link to a whole blog post I did about homeschooling on a budget, but it's definitely not necessary to have all these things. It's just fun and extra and like, you know, just makes learning different and um, maybe a little bit exciting at times, but definitely not necessary. Okay, so this table is one of my favorites. It was my grandmother's. It was in her house for my whole entire growing up and a lot of my early adult life. And I just feel so blessed to have it now because it's just, it's sentimental and the chairs are really comfy <laughs> and I like how it looks. 
we've always had some sort of preschool shelf or preschool corner when we've had preschoolers or toddlers, which has been like basically my entire parenting, <laughs> my entire homeschool career. I've, I've had preschoolers or toddlers and my youngest is just going into kindergarten. So he's still kind of in the preschool, you know, kindergarten time. And so this shelf is always you know, changing according to whatever our kids need. So right now my youngest is working on learning letters and simple adding and things like that and learning how to read. So I've got some things on the shelf for him for that. And then I have this basket that has more like learning materials that are just kind of all put in this basket. They're not really like, they're not really well organized. There's like some easy reader books that he can't even read yet, but you know. But this space will change as he starts to learn how to read. You know, these things are gonna, he's not gonna need all of these little letter things as much. And it might look more like the letter and word tiles that were on our other shelf or different things that, you know, go according to his developmental stage. But I do have this little tray for him to like, oh, that's dust, for him to pull things out and um, use them as he's working during his school time. So as my kids are getting older, they are using the computer a little bit more. And so we have it here in a central location just for, you know, computer safety. And this is a really, really old table, as you can see. <laughs> so we're not super fancy here. I think I got this table and I used it as a sewing table. Um, I don't know, like eight years ago, something like that. Um, there's just random school supplies on the shelf that I don't know. I don't even know what's on there. Nothing really organized. Um, but I really like having the computer in a central location. My kids use, you know, they write stories on it. They um, play music. They use um, some kind of like graphic design programs. They have limited usage of the internet under supervision because I think they're really young still. We don't really use a lot of online learning programs right now. Um, my oldest is going to have like an online component to his math for high school, but that's about it. Some fun posters that I don't even know where you can get them anymore. I got them from like Smokey the Bear. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So the book corner is pretty much one of my favorite places in the house. The books are semi-organized, but not completely like lots of chapter books on this shelf and on this shelf. My kids have chapter books in their rooms, got some like crafting and knitting supplies up here. This shelf, I kind of change it according to like whatever, like kind of like thematically, but then my kids will throw random, you can see that there's like gardening books on here. And then my kids throw random like Star Wars books in there too. <laughs> These, I always get asked about these um, book racks. I got them from a craft store that was going out of business. You can find them on Amazon, but they are super expensive. And these I got really inexpensive at um, the craft store that was going out of business. So I don't necessarily recommend going out and buying them new. If you can find them used, they're super fun. And I love displaying the books like that. I have this great shelf that I got from Walmart. It's really inexpensive. I love how it looks. It has little feet on the bottom and it was simple to put together and like I said I did not really clean so our vacuum doesn't work very well <laughs> um but these shelves are kind of organized I think the kids put some books on there in front but these are mostly organized according to like there's like history and science topics back here so that's kind of these are kind of organized, but most of these are nonfiction books. And then we have a lot of books that just at the moment need to be put in the right spots and are not organized. Books that I've gotten recently through um, rummage sales, thrift stores, um, things like that. All right, then back here, I've got this big Ikea shelf that I think is kind of like, doesn't everybody have this Ikea shelf? This is pretty organized by topic. You know like history um in one i've got a lot of our nature books like non-fiction books are in this center section but they're kind of organized like you can see i've got like earth and weather books here we've got like greek myths fairy tales kind of classic stories nature books 
animals and birds ocean over here so I try to keep this kind of organized but I do have five kids and it gets disorganized pretty quickly up here I have some more like reference books and some more craft supplies and just put some fun books on the end here that are just pretty and then I have another one of these um, display cases and then over here are just picture books mostly fiction and then on top are just more chapter books that are, don't really have like a lot of organization these I kind of just grouped together ones that are similar and then we have like a big bible basket down here and a giant pile of pillows and blankets that is not really <laughs> organized and this basket is all um alphabet and number books that was in a different spot for my youngest but got moved over here now this is one of my favorite spaces in this room because we've got these cozy couches we've got the fireplace in the winter time we have this table in the middle for um, playing games and learning and we do actually the majority of our homeschool right here on these couches and chairs and we do a lot of family style learning so we do literature based unit studies for the most part for the majority of our subjects because i love that we can all learn together but our kids can do it at their own pace and but we're still all like learning about the same topic and we are going to continue this family style learning as much as we can into the older high school years also. So it's gonna look a little different as some of my kids get into high school, but I'm really excited and I just really love having this special space for us to learn together as a family. And we just love to be centered more around home rather than school. So the, the space that we had when we first moved in here and the kids would all learn at the table and we had a chalkboard and it was much more like it just felt a little more like school and this just feels more home and for us that just makes more sense because homeschool is not just like a separate part of our life it's just our life we're always learning we're always you know doing things together and discovering things and exploring things and being creative and to do that together in this space is just really special and it works out really well for us so we've got the couch and we've got these chairs and I just love this space so much. And it just works out so nicely to have these cozy spaces for us to learn. But it's also right next to all of our school things. So we've got this table that is mostly now used for art projects. Some of the kids like to learn at the table, but um, or they like to do their work at the table. But honestly, they do their work all over the room because there are so many spaces for them to spread out. They can be on the beanbag, they can sit on the couch, stretch out on the floor, jump on the trampoline, they can sit at a table. Whatever it is that works for them, that is why I just love this space being so open and just having so many spaces to learn. I'm in the middle of organizing a lot of our homeschool materials for this coming year. So you can see I've got some stacks of things because Originally, we had the kids had their individual books, like their math books or language arts or whatever, their journals and different things that they had, they would keep in these drawers. And it was perfect because I have five kids and there were five drawers. But the drawers are just not large enough now, especially these top two drawers are smaller and it just hasn't been working out as well. So I moved some different materials into this um, cabinet and I got this tall cabinet that has five little compartments and there's not a lot in here yet because we just put it together and I don't have my kids materials for the year yet so each kid will have their own cabinet for their school materials um, I have this great set of encyclopedias from when I was a kid I think there's a lot of value in kids learning to look things up and not just always relying on the internet. We've got materials in these drawers, like we have these great, um, they're like placemats, but we use them kind of like learning materials, you know, like they kind of are like a book. So we have a bunch of those in here. What else do we have? just different dry erase boards and chalkboards, 
papers, a few coloring books, I think. Lots of notebooks and sketch pads. And I don't know, there's nothing really here. <laughs> and then we got this shelf free from a friend um, a couple years ago. So we just keep a lot of our papers and cards and envelopes and, you know, different um, homeschool materials. This is not organized at all this year. Um, but I do have a whole basket here that is dedicated to our morning work. Um, I don't think I've done a video about it yet. I will probably do a video about it because this is actually a really central part of our homeschool. I do have some highlights on it in um, on Instagram if you're on Instagram, but I will put a video together. So each of my kids has a folder and they use this in the morning for their morning work and they get to kind of like choose what they want to do for their morning work and I have all of these printables this morning work packet is um in my shop and you can like this is part of it there's um papers for doing the verse of the day and there's different um kind of levels so there's like a number of the day, this is for younger kids, and then there's a different one for older kids. And I laminate the pages, this is the same. I'm trying to see if something different. Oh, this is for my youngest. This one is a freebie on my, on my website. Um, so just different things that they can do in the morning. And I usually will tell them like, oh, you have to do, maybe today you have to do this one, tomorrow you can do a different one. I'm trying to see what else is, we have art, page music page so just a lot of those like typical things you might find in morning time but we use it just a little bit differently I'll put together a whole video about this if you have any questions please leave them below in the comments and I will try to answer them or do another video this is just like watercolor pages just some different books more art supplies. This is the best pencil sharpener. If you don't have it, you probably should. I will link it below. It is fantastic. All right, so then there's just like fun decor. We use this um, chalkboard. We use it a lot for our morning work and that is probably the thing we use it for the most often. But, um, you know, the kids, one of the kids made a calendar for July and, you know, we just use it However, this ABC chart is a printable in my shop and we have flashcards that go with it. We've got map of the United States down here. We have a world map here right now. I think I just have some like drawing and Mad Libs and crossword puzzles and kind of more summary books. This is the basket though that we usually put our morning work books in um, that the kids can choose from. I will put books in this basket on a specific topic or like something we're talking about and then they can kind of like read the book, summarize it, write something that they learned from it in their morning work packet. Then we just have this art table that has like, you know, this I think this came from Hobby Lobby and we just keep all of our art materials in there. Our friends at Troyo House, they make the most amazing wooden things and we have a lot of their materials in our house these paint boards, we have a bunch more paint boards from them over there. Then this crayon holder is from them and I will link them below. They are our favorite shop. All right, then down here in this cabinet, we have, let's see what we got in here. Mostly art supplies, paints, glue, canvases. I don't know, just random random things chalk pastels just random art stuff in here and then most of these books are art related you know nature drawing art ideas some of the books are like some of the books are like tutorial type like how to draw something and some of them are more learning like about artists and you know um different types of art there's a, this great visual encyclopedia of art so we just i just keep all of our art related books in here um and then sometimes i'll pull them out i will pull out specific art books if we're talking about a specific artist or i want the kids to just explore a different artist i will pull out a book and open it up to a painting and put it on the table for our morning work and then i will put it on 
like an easel like that. All right, what else is in here? I think these are just more art supplies. Index cards, this is falling apart. We've had this cabinet forever. Tape, rulers, stuff like that. And then I think there's Play-Doh down there. All right, then over on this side, we have just a fun basketball hoop. My oldest loves basketball. And so it's a great way to get out energy, especially in the winter. Um, you know, being in Wisconsin, it's great to have active things to do inside. My kids really love music. So we've got a couple of guitars and an amp. And then um, that's just a furnace closet. And then we've got this shelf that I have different. Um, each of these bins is a different continent. And so there's books related to each country. So I try to keep them like this. So even if we're not actually studying the countries, if I need a certain, you know, we're randomly talking about something about China, I can pull out the Asia bin and we can find the books on China. Then we've got here, um, this is a magnet board here and there's just a bunch of magnets in this basket here. So besides the basketball hoop and all of these balls, we've got the gymnastics mats and we've got this huge like bean bag thing that I will link to. It, it folds out into a bed. So that's why we originally got it in our previous house because we didn't have a lot of space for extra guest beds. So it folds out into a bed. Um, the kids use it a lot. They'll like jump off the trampoline onto it. It's just fun for like, you know, the fun wrestling and all those jumping and things like that. Um, and then we'll pull it out sometimes for like movie nights. And then the wobble board and highly, highly, highly recommend having a small trampoline in your house, especially if you live in a cold climate to have a space for kids to be jumping and active and moving, especially in the winter. Now, like I said before, these things are not all necessary. I do not think you need to have a giant room for your homeschool space. In reality, most of this space that is like homeschool related is just this small corner or, you know, we have our big library corner, but that could be scattered throughout, you know, the entire house. You don't need to have all of this stuff concentrated into one room if you don't have space for it or if it doesn't work for your family. So when we had one room that was fully dedicated just to a homeschool space, like I said, it didn't really work for us because that's just not how, how we do our life. And it didn't make these like cozy spaces to make learning feel more natural. And it doesn't feel then like we are separating learning from the rest of our life. It's just, we're doing our life and we're, you know, doing all the things that we normally do. And it just becomes more of a regular thing rather than Homeschool's over here and our life is over here because we build our homeschool around our life. We don't try to build our life around our homeschool and around our curriculum. The center of it all is our home and is our family and is our life. And there's so much more to homeschool than just the things that are done at a table and in a workbook. So I recommend that you do have spaces that you feel like your kids can get messy and be creative and explore. So if you do not have a specific table that your kids can do art at, have a cabinet that you can have art supplies that they have access to. And maybe they have to put out like a paint board or a tablecloth or something to keep your you know, your dinner table clean or a space that they can regularly have access to these materials so that they're not constantly asking your permission because when they have to ask your permission, it kind of stifles that creativity and it leaves them thinking that it's something that you do during a special time and not just something that they can do when they feel the urge to learn or the urge to be creative. So having spaces in your house where your kids can learn and create and discover and explore, that's really good. It doesn't have to look the way mine looks. And in fact, it really shouldn't. It should look how it works for your family. So what are some things you might wanna have in your homeschool space? Well, like I said, a space for kids to be creative and explore, some sort of bookshelf or um, baskets where you can have books out and you don't have to have them all out at the same time like I do. If you have a smaller space, when we lived in a smaller house, we had a bookshelf in our hallway 
we had baskets and I kept a lot of books in our basement and I would rotate them out, which is kind of fun because it makes them feel a little bit more fresh and new and exciting. And then you can just rotate them based on like the topic that you're studying or if you have a bookshelf in your kids' rooms, like you don't have to keep them all in the same space. But having access to materials, I think is really important. So even if you have them in a closet or a cabinet like this, just knowing that your kids can get to them is really important. But having, you know, art materials and paper and books, honestly, that's all you need. You don't need all the fancy manipulatives, materials, the wooden letters, all those things, you don't need them. You can print out letters on the computer and then you can laminate them and you can use them like that. You can use sticks and twigs and acorns and rocks and pine cones for counting materials. You don't have to go out and buy something special just for homeschooling unless you want to and you have the budget or you find it at a thrift store. Those are extra materials that you don't need that are just nice to have. So I'm gonna leave links to whatever I can. I'll leave a link to my Amazon storefront. But remember, these are not things that you need to have in your house. Use what works within your space, within your budget, within your family's lifestyle and your family's needs. If you have smaller kids, your space is gonna look a little different than mine does. If you have only older kids, your space is gonna look different than mine does too. Work within your budget, within your family, and within you know the space that you have in your home. Whether you are homeschooling at your kitchen table or a dedicated homeschool room, doesn't matter. Your kids are still getting a beautiful home education no matter what your space looks like. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll be back soon with another video. In the meantime, keep cultivating your home.